this is Sarah, the Catholic homemaker. I hope you all had a wonderful and happy Easter and you had a blessed Holy Week and Easter as well. And this is the beginning of the Easter season. So I thought I would do my video today on a book review that I just completed reading The Life of, of Mary as Seen by the Mystics. It's an interlibrary loan. So let me just show you right here. Um, and it is compiled by Raphael Brown, and it's from the Revelations of St. Elizabeth of Shono. She lived from 1129 to 1164, the Venerable Mary of Agreda, 1602 to 1665, Venerable Anne Catherine Emmerich from 1774 to 1824, and St. Bridget of Sweden from 1307 to 1373. And the first thing I want to say about this book is that it is not a historical biography. And the, the person that compiled these, at least, gives us a warning and a disclaimer and an introduction that we have to be careful to not take everything in this book as a historical fact, but just... Um, because these are private revelations by each one of these venerables or saints. But it is a truly wonderful book, I think, and it has helped me so much in my Lenten sacrifice. So before I get started, I wanted to say welcome to everybody who is new to my channel, and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel if you are new here, if you haven't done so yet. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and hit the notification bell for all notifications so you know when I post, which is every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, if you could share this video and comment below what you think. If you've read this book before, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it. All right, so let's dive in. First of all, I really wanted to just focus on really one main theme, and the thing that, the, the thing that really inspired me to read this book is actually Laura from What Laura Likes. She recommended it to me because I was struggling with a few sins in my life and I guess it ultimately comes to the sin of pride and I will say that one of the things I did during Lent was try to be more sweet and try to not burst out in anger to certain family members and to really just kind of reflect on those things and, and just try not to just react to things, to try to be a little more proactive and little control about my anger. And I think I've talked about this, about my struggle on this channel before just a little bit. So that's really my main focus about what I wanted to talk about. It's just that this book has helped me to overcome that a little bit, to overcome the sin of pride. And um, that's not something I realized that it's something I really struggled with, but I think probably a lot of people struggle with and they don't realize it, especially in today's day and age, because so many people will just get offended very easily and they think everything's about them. And oftentimes, like, I think that with certain family members and when they really weren't trying to make it about me at all. And so... The one example I want to give is that Mary, as she was growing up and even into her adult life, she had people who were being very mean to her and just making fun of her, saying terrible things, things that weren't even true most of the time. And she never thought to herself, how dare they say that about me? I don't deserve this kind of treatment. And of course, that's not to say that you should be treated like a doormat, like nobody should be treated like a doormat, but she was treated this way and a lot of it was kind of coming from the devil because he saw just how holy she was and he was trying to break her. He didn't succeed, of course. Instead of what would be a normal human reaction, like how dare people say that to me and try to fight back or react back in anger, her response was to look inwardly to herself and think, what did I do to offend them? What a horrible creature I am. 
And I'm not necessarily saying that we should just be so self-deprecating, but she was truly a model of the way that we should be reacting and not to be reacting in anger. Of course, Christ is the ultimate model, but he had his mother here as an example to all of us as well. And as a 100% human model to us, like ultimately how he wanted us to be before the fall of Adam and Eve. A lot of times um, in the past, I would react out in anger because something would trigger me. And I certainly had a few of those moments even during Lent because I mean, maybe it's something I will always struggle with and just something I always have to be proactive about, but I will say that those instances were a lot fewer during Lent because of that and because of me reading about Mary's example throughout her entire life and just the amount of sacrifices and mortifications she did for Jesus, for God, and for the salvation of all souls. She, that is really what she made her entire life about. And then bringing up her son and into his adult life, she tried to, or she requested the Lord that he allow her to take on the suffering of her son. And the Lord, according to these private revelations to these mystics of the church, he granted that request to her. And so everything during Christ's passion, she took on as well. She felt all the physical and spiritual, emotional pain that Christ felt. And they were as one heart together, suffering together. And they took a little bit of comfort in each other's suffering that they were supporting each other. And God also revealed to Mary that he would go through this. So it wasn't a surprise to her, but um, she was torn between wanting to help her son and alleviate his suffering, but also wanting to do the perfect will of God. So she always was one with God's will. Um, and it was just like Christ said, um, let not my will be done, but your will. And um, it's, it's just truly amazing. There are so many touching emotional parts in the, the book. And a lot of times, even before I read this book, I would think, um, how can, uh, or just looking to Mary's example, like, how can I be a better parent and looking at Mary and just seeing how she was with Jesus or with anyone? Another great thing about this book is you learn about Saints Anne and Saint jo Joachim, who were the father and mother of Mary. And if you're not Catholic, we know and believe that Mary was conceived without sin. And so the Holy Spirit came between Saint Anne and Saint Joachim. And when Mary was conceived, there was no sin at all. And that's how she was free from sin, free from original sin throughout her life because the Holy Spirit, God, um, willed that to happen. It's also very interesting to learn about Saint Joseph and just how holy he was. And by the way, Saints Anne and Saint Joachim, they came from a whole line of holy people, um, the Jewish people, but their families were just these truly holy people. And Saint Joseph as well, um, Saint Joseph and Mary, according to these private revelations, had actually committed themselves, promised themselves to God to be chaste their entire lives. When it was revealed to them that they were meant to be married to each other, they were actually both 
devastated because they had made that vow of chastity to the Lord. And But of course, the Lord hadn't fully revealed his plan to them at that time. So it's just very interesting to learn about Mary's parents and also St. Joseph, especially because St. Joseph in the Bible, he there are no words that are shown by St. Joseph, but in these private revelations, you learn a little bit more about St. Joseph. So in conclusion, I just highly, highly recommend this book because it just, if, if you are struggling with the sin of pride or just anger in any sort of way, then I think looking to Mary's model for all of us is a truly great example of how we should be. One last thing I wanted to say, there's a chapter about Judas in there. And you learn just a little more about Judas and what leads up to his betrayal of Christ. And it's just truly amazing because, okay, for one thing, jumping to another subject, I have talked about gentle or respectful parenting on my channel a couple of times with a couple of book reviews that I have done. And after reading the chapter about Judas, it's a very short chapter, but I just thought at the end of it, the way that Christ and the way that Mary treated Judas, it's like they were the ultimate respectful or gentle parents. It's like, even though as much as Judas was turning away from Christ and just getting angrier every time that Mary or Jesus tried to bring Judas back to him, um, one example with Mary is that like both Mary and Christ knew that Judas would ultimately betray Christ. So it was revealed to Mary, but so even after she knew that she tried to still sacrifice and mortify herself, um, pray, offer up anything that she could for Judas's salvation of his soul and she did this many other times with very hardened sinners too. But it just, it really broke her heart. So every time that Judas tried to do something worse and, and Mary tried to bring him back, it just angered him more. And she tried to treat him even more gently after that. So it's just truly amazing because if you think about like the average person with the stain of sin on them, that's all of us our normal reaction to that would be to get angry back. It wouldn't be to be more gentle. So it's just truly amazing her model and Christ's model of how we should be and just the ultimate gentle parents. Even though your children may be acting out and it makes you angry, they still were trying to bring them back. And so... I hope you have found this video to be helpful and I'd love to hear what you think below. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week and Easter season. May God bless you.